Hello there. According to Tory MP Ian Duncan Smith, the UK could still be on the hook for £160 billion via our continued liability to the European Investment Bank and the EFSM. Firstly, please subscribe and like this video to give my channel a boost. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check back daily. According to the Brexiteer Tory MP for Chingford and Woodford Green, Ian Duncan Smith, the UK could be called upon for up to £160 billion due to post-Brexit liabilities to the European Investment Bank and the European Financial Stability Mechanism. Now, I fervently hope he's wrong on this one. So I did a bit of digging to try and find out where that number came from. And although it could be very bad, I don't think it's quite as bad as advertised. But first, let's see what IDS is saying. According to The Sun, he said, We would basically be bootstrapped to Europe for the foreseeable future. If people thought we were only paying £39 billion, they can forget it. We've got a potential bill of £160 billion and Covid could raise that massively. This would lock us into the EU's debt mountain. And the Sun explains that it could stem from UK involvement in the European Investment Bank, the EIB, and the European Financial Stability Mechanism, the EFSM. And that hundreds of billions of euros have gone to investment projects across its 27 members, some of them economically fragile. Britain's share of liability is around 12%. Experts reckon this could translate into £160 billion of unpaid loans, four times Britain's £39 billion divorce deal. And then it goes on to say that the pandemic could push this huge bill even higher as member state economies and businesses fail. And The Sun says that senior Tory MPs like IDS are calling for the Withdrawal Agreement Treaty to be reopened so we can change it to get a clean break from these mechanisms at the end of the Brexit implementation period on the 31st of December. That's if the EU was up for changing it. And what do they get in return for that? Our fishing grounds and a level playing field? All sounds horrific, doesn't it? But as I said, there is hope here, as it might not be as bad as poor trade. Now, what exactly is the European Investment Bank, the EIB, anyway? And what exactly is the European Financial Stability Mechanism, the EFSM? I'll start off with the EFSM, and remember, there are many other funds as well, the ESM and the EFSF, which are not connected. Anyway, according to the EU Commission website, the European Financial Stability Mechanism, EFSM, was created for the European Commission to provide financial assistance to any EU country experiencing or threatened by severe financial difficulties. With the House of Commons Library saying in 2011 that it is a 60 billion euro fund. And the EU Commission says the EFSM was used after the credit crunch by Ireland and Portugal between 2011 and 2014, and by Greece for a short term lending spree in 2015. And that nowadays Eurozone countries should not use the EFSM, but use the ESM instead a Eurozone fund to which the UK has no liability. The EFSM, however, remains in place and can be used if the need arises, says the EU Commission. Now, back in 2017, Lydon Consulting Services said that UK still on the hook for €19.4 billion Euros of Ireland's financial bailout money until 2042. The UK was a major participant in the financial bailout of the Republic of Ireland in 2010 to 2014 and will remain so under the withdrawal agreement, notwithstanding its leaving the European Union. 
Now, as I understand it, this part of the withdrawal agreement was not changed by Boris Johnson prior to signing up to it last December. And the EU Commission also says that Ireland is subject to post-programme surveillance, PPS, until at least 75% of the financial assistance received has been repaid. PPS will last until at least 2031. The total amount given out to Ireland was €22.5 billion Euros as far as I can see. And Portugal is now under post-programme surveillance, PPS, until at least 75% of the financial assistance received has been repaid. PPS is expected to last until 2035, with the total amount given to Portugal being some €24.3 billion. Euros. Now, a lot of that may have been repaid, but more than 25% is outstanding for many years to come. So one assumes we're on the hook for some of that, if they end up defaulting, that is. I'm also assuming that the bridging loans given to Greece have been repaid. Now, the good news is that as far as I can see, as a non-banker, non-lawyer, there is no way that the UK can be liable for any loans given out by the EFSM after we legally left the EU on the 31st of January this year. And on this, Lydon Consulting said, The UK withdrawal agreement contains a clause that makes the UK still open to claims that were part of the commitment appropriation as at the UK's leaving date. So anything loaned out now for new lending or for Covid would not, I think, attract UK liability. Now how about the European Investment Bank, the EIB? According to a House of Commons Library briefing paper from 2019, when the UK joined the EU, we paid €3.5 billion Euros into the EIB vaults as capital. That's 16% of the EIB capital. And also that the European Investment Bank was set up in 1958 under the terms of the Treaty of Rome. Based in Luxembourg, it lends to projects that contribute to growth and employment within Europe. With its AAA rating, the EIB borrows money really cheaply from the markets and then lends it out to projects that contribute to growth and employment within Europe. So it's not exactly an emergency fund. Further, the Institute for Government said in March this year, As the EIB does not make commercial returns, it is a cheaper long-term source of finance than private equivalents. The EIB primarily invests in credit where the EIB assumes financial institutions' credit risk to encourage them to lend, transport and energy projects. And it's the part where the Institute looks at the effect of the UK leaving the EU that is the interesting bit. And the first point to note is that we have a liability of up to €35.4 billion Euros in what is called callable capital. And the Institute says that this is money which the UK is obliged to pay if the EIB suffers losses it was unable to cover using its accumulated reserves. Next, the £3.5 billion we paid in at the start has to be paid back to us in 12 annual instalments, the first of which was made back in December 2019, right after the withdrawal agreement was agreed between the EU and the UK. Now, the Institute says that the UK will still be liable for the full amount of callable capital, €35.4 billion, Euros, but only for projects agreed prior to our legal release from the EU on the 31st of January. So once those end, our liability ends. And if those liabilities are triggered, then we would pay in on the same terms as EU member states. This preserves the EIB's operating conditions to ensure that existing projects don't face disruption because of the UK's withdrawal from the EU, says the Institute. But presumably only up to the callable capital limit of €35.4 billion. Euros. 
The disappointing thing to note is that despite having a 16% share in the bank, we only ever managed to get 8-9% to of the total in cheap loans on offer. I also have to point out that the full liabilities here would only be required if a significant proportion of every single country and business was going sour. And if that happened, owing a few billion quid on paper to those EU bodies would probably be the least of our worries, as it would mean that we'd all be back to bartering eggs for butter as the entire global economic system would be imploding. So if we're on the hook for the sums I've outlined, it may be for far less than the 160 billion quoted by IDS, even factoring in what's left of the 39 billion pound Brexit divorce payment. So I hope I'm right and that IDS is wrong. Also bear in mind that when Boris signed us up to this, a pandemic was not yet on the horizon, so the chances of our being required to pay into those funds was probably thought of as very low probability. But there has been talk that as part of any new trade deal, Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak will be looking to sign the UK back into the European Investment Bank. That would mean that we would need to relodge a hefty few billion back into the bank and be liable for new and future loans to projects, and still probably get little out of it when compared to everyone else. And that may be where we're heading, because the Institute for Government also said, The Johnson government ran a consultation on infrastructure finance between March and June 2019 and whether the UK needed to establish a new operationally independent UK infrastructure finance institution, but has yet to publish a response. With the web page on this review saying today that We are analysing your feedback. Visit this page again soon to download the outcome of this public feedback, which ended over a year ago on the 5th of June last year. The Institute also said, Any UK replacement would be resource intensive. Werner Hoyer, the president of the EIB, has said that it would take 10 years and significant upfront capital investment for the UK to set up a replacement with the equivalent capacity to make loans and equity investment. At the end of the day, yes, Despite Brexit, we are on the hook for billions via both the EIB and the EFSM, but as far as I can see as a non-expert, only for the pre the 31st of January loans, and only if they go pear-shaped. And that seems to be limited to a proportion of the amount left outstanding by Portugal and Ireland via the EFSM and our callable capital to the EIB of 34.5 billion euros. But as I said, I'm no expert. And I also can't see how any new loans made by any EU institution after the 31st of January can come back and bite us, so we shouldn't need to worry about an EU claim for things like Covid-related expenses. But what really worries me is this talk about the UK government quietly signing the UK back into the European Investment Bank. Not only does that open the UK up to EU liabilities, it would also be a stepping stone laid down like a red carpet for the rejoin campaign to build on. And you can bet your cotton socks our membership of the EIB would come with a lot of EU strings attached. More likely hawsers, in fact. Anyway, if you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it. So what do you think about the UK still being on the EU hook for many billions? Please share and comment, and thank you for watching.